Hi, this is part two of a two-part video, so if you haven't seen the first one, you know, the MK8 Music Theory, check that out now. I'm assuming that you've watched it if you're watching this one, so without further ado, let's get into this. Alright, so the conclusion of the last video is that we have a list of like 65 courses and 40 are going to make the cut. And I think the first thing that I'm going to say is I expect that all MK Tour tracks get in. And I think that there's going to be a few extra ones that don't even exist yet that we're going to see as well. Maybe they add in a few of the RMX courses as well. I don't know, but we'll find out. But anyways, I think that of the remaining 40 courses, that 12 of them are going to be MKT courses. Eight are going to be the ones that we're expecting to be added right now. Four are going to be brand new ones. I think Amsterdam was added to the list, so I don't know if that's in there already. There may be an RMX, as mentioned. Who knows? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expect 28 courses to, you know, be put into this game from the original seven games in the series, and we're going to go over that in this video. So there's a few rules. Of these seven games, I think they're probably going to put a little bit of an emphasis on, you know, the hype tracks, the fan favorites, if you will. And this is because of the DLC, there's really no rules on, like, what exactly they're going to put in. They're just probably going to put in exciting stuff. So that's kind of my expectation, but I think that does have limits. I do think that tracks that are in Mario Kart Tour as retro courses are probably favored to be in over the others, uh, especially the MKT originals as mentioned because they need a place to be archived in history since it's a phone game, so probably the service will go down at some point. I would say also that you can't just pick what you think the best tracks are when doing something like this, because there still needs to be good new retros to bring back for Mario Kart 9, so we gotta focus on that as well. You can't get rid of all of them off the board, but what this means is that, you know, like the best ones that have already been remade that likely aren't going to be MK9 Retro Tracks, I would expect those to be coming back in full force. To start on the 28 courses, I think we have to focus on what the game has given us already, and that is going to be the signs and all the billboards on Coconut Mall. One has an image of Dino Dino, which may be referring to Dino Dino Jungle, which we'll take as our first course here. And then there's also a sign that has Vanilla Lake on it, on Coconut Mall as well, which is going to be our second course. Which one it is, uh, I'll say that at the end, but let's just say that we're going to take one because, you know, that's like one music slot, so that means that that's going to cover that. So that's 2 of 28 right there. And while we're on it, I kind of feel like and it, like a Super Nintendo Mario Circuit, you know, one of the originals, it just feels destined to happen. It probably means it's Mario Circuit 1, but maybe it's 2. I kind of feel like it may be 2 for some reason, probably because it was an MK7. But I think that's going to be probably a no-brainer pick, so that's going to be our first 3. Now, for the 4th course, you guys are going to get mad because I'm already breaking my theory a little, but we did acknowledge this in the last video. For instance, DS Wario Stadium and DS Waluigi Pinball, they're going to have different remixes if they're both in Mario Kart 8. And I think that is going to happen. DS Waluigi Pinball is just simply probably the most beloved track in the series. I think everybody knows that. I think Nintendo knows that. I think they're probably going to find a way to add it in. It's just too much of a classic and I don't think that the Wario Stadium music would fit for it anyway. And you know, it's an MKT. I just have a feeling that it's going to find its way in, even though it breaks like the theory that I was talking about earlier. But hey, we'll see. So that's going to be my fourth selection right now. My other comment for the beginning is I think that they're going to bring back 3DS Rainbow Road. Like Pinball, it was in Mario Kart Tour as well, and just too many people like it for them to pass it up. If they want to capitalize on its popularity, I get the feeling that they don't want to wait until the 13th Mario Kart game to bring it back, which may be, you know what you would expect right now since they've been doing a Rainbow Road as the last track at the Lightning Cup now for a while. So I don't think they're going to wait, I think they're going to pull the trigger and 3DS Rainbow Road will be our fifth course. Now going from here, I think we start with the GameCube courses because there's not too many options left assuming that we only take one in each slot. I think that they'll select a solid chunk of these actually because the game is popular and they haven't chose a lot of the more popular courses from the game yet outside of Yoshi Circuit. Now Rainbow Road I do find kind of hard to make work with AD's physics, so our options are pretty limited I would say. I'm going to actually select GC and Bowser's Castle for now because I think it's in a similar position to Shroom Ridge which also got selected. If you saw my Retro Track Predictions video, 
a few months back. It, like, it's clear that there aren't many reasons why it wouldn't come back in the near future. There's also a smaller pool of Double Dash tracks to select from, and there's only one BC in this entire game as of now, and it's not even retro. It's also convenient that they didn't remix this track's theme for the GC and Luigi's Mansion Battle Stage, and I think it's simply a safer bet to pick than the more new 3D Bowser's Castles. So that will be our sixth course, GC and Bowser's Castle. When considering the remaining three options by our music theory, the ones I find least likely to return are the traffic courses because they just added Shroom Ridge in. As much as I want it, the only new course left that they could add in this situation would be Wario Coliseum. And I'm not sure how many new courses they're actually going to add. Most of the returning retros outside of Tour were second time retro courses as well, with Shroom Ridge and Toad Circuit being the exceptions, but the thing is, 3DS tracks by default are going to be first time retro courses, unless you want to count MKT. I don't because almost all of them were made in that game. But anyways, any Mario Kart 7 course in this game is going to be a first time retro, so it's hard to even count TC as an exception for Pack 1. I mainly say this also because there's no course I want more than Mario Coliseum, which means I'm fully expecting disappointment at this point. So with that being said, GCM Waluigi Stadium is going to be your 7th selection. To wrap the GameCube courses up, I find it hard to see them passing on one of the courses from the last slot, and Daisy Cruiser makes way more sense than Peach Beach, in my opinion at least. It's because there are plenty more beach courses to select, and Daisy Cruiser is way more popular, I think. Uh, Cruiser itself is in MK7, and probably a potential returning tour track already, so I think this is probably a slam dunk selection for them as their 8th course, GCN Daisy Cruiser. It's worth noting that I find it hard to believe that they're going to take another simple circuit course, assuming they add a SNES Mario Circuit on top of Toad Circuit. I could maybe see DS Mario Circuit, but definitely really not the others at this point. And I also find it really hard to believe that they would take DK's Jungle Parkway if they add Dino Dino Jungle into a game that already has, you know, DK Jungle in it. Uh, it feels like there are just too many conflicts here to make it work, and Dino Dino Jungle appears to be potentially confirmed already. And this leaves the only remaining DK themed courses as the snow courses, which would be Pass and Summit. And I would ordinarily take DK Pass, but I feel like adding DK Summit to Mario Kart Tour has some sort of significance. It feels really out of place otherwise. Additionally, I feel like DK Pass may have a weird transition to this game as opposed to MK7. With this being said, DK Summit is our ninth selection. Now, I fully expect them to bring back a lot of the MK Wii courses that they use in MK7. Matter of fact, I kind of think that they're going to bring back all of them. Uh, this is because they burned a lot of fan favorites on a handheld game. And after they tried to sell the booster course pass using Coconut Mall, I would kind of expect that they want to, you know, bring back more. As such, I'm going to add Maple Tree Way, Mushroom Gorge, and Koopa Cape as well. Koopa Cape is the one I feel weakest about, but I see them doing it to pander to MK Weed nostalgia. So that's going to be our 10, 11, and 12 tracks. Matter of fact, I kind of expect that Maple Treeway is going to be the headliner for one of the trailers in the future, but we'll see if that happens. You can quote me on it when it does. Looking at the MKDS tracks over now, there are a few I feel are probably regarded in higher esteem than the others, and this would clearly be Delfino Square and Airship Fortress. Uh, those are the courses that have already returned that I think would be popular to come back for potentially one more ride. So that's 13 and 14. We're halfway there. Now, another course I think might go under the radar here is Peach Gardens. Outside of Royal Raceway, there's no Peach themed course, and Gardens kind of feels like maybe the course that best represents the character. And I would expect all the major characters to probably get at least two courses in 96 tracks. And we already declined Peach Beach and eliminated Peach Circuit via the Music Theory, so the 15th track I'm taking here is Peach Gardens. This kind of makes sense to me for the DS tracks, to be honest. Uh, Yoshi Falls and Desert Hills I don't see coming back due to them not being as popular, even though I am a YF enthusiast. And quite frankly, they're just more bland than the others. 8 already has two Yoshi courses, one DLC, and there are plenty of other desert options to take in the earlier games. If you really need both these track types, maybe Yoshi Desert is your pick instead. Uh, DS Mario Circuit is still here, but on further thought, I just don't think it's going to come back. Shroom Ridge already is the first time retro taken for the booster pass in this game. And if they take more than one, the pickings are really slim for the next game in the series, so I think they're going to hold off for now. For number 16, this is a weird hunch, but I'm going to go with Banshee Boardwalk. It feels like a pretty loved course that got used in MKDS and was never Wi-Fi playable unless I'm really forgetting something. 
Uh, in Wave 1, they already chose Sky Garden and Chaco Mountain, which were both beloved tracks that returned in MKDS. Sky Garden was right next to Banshee Boardwalk in the track order in that game, and Chaco Mountain was the one the cup before from the same game. I think that it's a perfect fit as a ghostly themed course, and additionally speaking, after looking at the remaining GBA tracks, it's kind of hard for the other three on the N64 list to even justify a spot at this point. So I almost feel like that this course is a lock the more I think about it. Don't quote me on that, of course. Quick look at the GBA tracks. I know I mentioned Yoshi Desert earlier, but I'm going to pass it up. Namely because I think that they're going to choose Sunset Wilds instead. And it feels almost destined to be in this game after a surprise occurrence in MK Tour. Uh, and Cheap Cheap Island kind of feels the same way. Up to this point, it feels like we desperately need a beach course and desert track. And these just feel most likely. Well, I guess it's not desperate that we need it. It's just like we kind of are waiting for one. And it kind of feels like these are likely options since they're in tour. Uh, Yoshi Desert, ha you know, as a kind of like the bright sunny course may come off. It's too similar to Cheeseland, also from this game. And even Desert. So... I think that Sunset Wilds and Cheap Cheap Island are probably likely as 17 and 18. Now, I'm definitely expecting like two more Game Boy Advance courses, and I think one's probably going to be a Bowser Castle. And historically, they love adding them. Like, they've added both a 2D and 3D BC as retro courses before. I don't know which one I'm taking of the, th of the four courses, but I'm kind of leaning towards two, maybe three. And for a final GBA track, we have three options that haven't made a return in any form whatsoever yet, similar to Shroom Ridge. I initially thought of Snowland, but then remembered that we're taking a Vanilla Lake, which is also a 2D ice track. And with DK Summit as well, I kind of feel like the snow courses are kind of borderline off the table. And if they were going to take another also, I kind of feel like it'd be Frap Snowland, just for the same reasons as Banshee Boardwalk. So this leaves us with one of the parks. And we haven't taken really many Mushroom Cup courses up to this point, so my gut is leaning with Riverside Park here, which is cool. It's one of my favorites. Now, this is where things get really difficult, and part of the reason why I'm expecting 12 MKT courses to return, even though we don't even have 12 MKT tracks left, uh, because nothing really feels like an obvious fit that's left. Up to this point, though, I've kind of been thinking that they choose one track that they haven't really retroed yet, even in tour per original game. You know, Shroom Ridge, as mentioned a lot, has been the example, and I followed it up now with GCN, Bowser's Castle, and Riverside Park. But, that would leave N64 Wario Stadium for MK64, which I think everyone is expecting to come back, but I actually don't think so. And first, it kind of breaks the music theory. Technically, it's pretty different from Royal Raceway, but still, we already have a Wario Stadium in the game. And I think Waluigi Stadium is going to be added too, so... That would be kind of weird to have three, especially like a duplicate. And don't they need something for Mario Kart 9 as well? Like, I think they actually hold here. Additionally speaking, a SNES Bowser Castle would make sense. Yet, I can't get over the thought that they'll just choose a GBA one instead. And the reason? Well, they've done it every single time up to this point. And until they break the precedent, it's just hard to see it happening. At this point, all of MK7 has been remade in MK Tour except for the WooHoo tracks, which... I think may be out entirely. So you might have noticed that I read it out, Luigi's Mansion and the WooHoo tracks. And the reason for that is just the battle courses. They already have had their themes remixed and it'd be kind of weird to have it just done again. I'm going to remember this is a music theory video, even if we've gone off track. So, well, not a real music theory video, but discussing my music theory for the game. So I'm going to stick with it a little bit and read those tracks out. So, yeah, I mean, we have very few options left. For a new Wii course, it probably should be Dry Dry Ruins. They've yet to choose a single Special Cup track yet to return in this game. Yet, I can't help but feel it's too similar to Dry Dry Desert in appearance. You know, especially if the graphics stay bad in the DLC, it'd be really awkward to, you know, add it just for it to be compared to the 2014 version that will probably look better. Maybe they'll do a better job, but we'll see. Uh, screw it, I guess. Let's go with Toad's Factory. Now, there's already two co Toad courses in the game, and Daisy Circuit's probably more likely, but in this, like, this is my worst pick, but, you know, I, I'm just feeling it, like, the MK Wii Nostalgia. You know, it's, like, probably the fan-favorite track from the game outside of Coconut Mall, so let's roll with it. Now, I think there's got to be at least one more 3DS track, too. As much as I'd like it to be Wario Shipyard, we have three Wario tracks already, and Coliseum's probably more likely due to just the GCN scarcity. 
I would say that Shipyard has an edge due to Tour, but so does every 3DS track, and I think that they're probably just dumb to Wario tracks in this game. Daisy Hills may be a possibility in the timeline where we skip Daisy Circuit, and Cheap Cheap Lagoon feels like a long shot with me, taking Island and Beach already being there. And Shy Guy Bazaar, well, it feels possible. Likely, even. And maybe the best way to add another desert track at this point would be for it to not look like your typical desert course. I'm gonna go with another option, though, which is Rock Rock Mountain. And again, this is another hunch, but no tracks really like it I've taken yet, so I think that this is probably the easiest remaining pick. At this point, it almost feels impossible that there are still six courses left, because nothing remaining really feels like a slam dunk fit, but this is probably good news for us as it means there are more possibilities. Like, maybe it means another Rainbow Road comes back, or that the Rainbow Road Cup is still somehow on the table. Or maybe I've just been too harsh on these evaluations. The point is that there are many slots remaining to be filled that it feels like all this stuff in green feels just really likely. And I wouldn't be surprised if over 18 of the green courses right now got in the game. I think as a result, I'm just going to go with Shy Guy Bazaar. Now, it feels too popular to not get in at this point with the limited options, and this is also awkward because I kind of want to take Calamari Desert too. It feels like they're both unique enough along the Sunset Wilds to somehow all work, even though it probably shouldn't. And with that being said, I'll definitely roll with a Koopa Beach over Chaco Island, and it kind of feels unlikely to me that Koopa Cape and Koopa Troopa Beach would be in the same game again, with all the beach courses already. I don't know. That leaves us with three courses remaining. And it actually kind of feels impossible to finish this. Maybe this is evidence against my theory, potentially. Maybe they'll add even more MKT courses. I think at this point though, with how many, with how few options there are, I gotta go with Daisy Hills. And this would give us 9 3DS, 9 Wii, 8 DS, 8 GCN, 8 Super Circuit, 7 64, and 5 SMK courses with two remaining. I think a distribution where we add one more SNES and one more 64 track is probably the most sensical option. So my final picks would then be to take a Ghost Valley and Frap Snowland. As I mentioned that it feels kind of likely for the same reason as Boardwalk. That would give us our 28. However, I thought of something that actually makes more sense to me potentially. Currently our distribution by game is 6888899. And it feels like it may be more consistent if the order was the following 7788899. And I mentioned that Frap Snow Inf kind of feels like a reach because of the snow courses already, so I'm gonna take it off again. The reason why I propose this is because it feels like there is zero good reason for us to not take a SNES Bowser Castle at this point. Because I'm just looking at how few tracks are left, and it's like, well, all these feel like long shots, and this one feels like it makes the most sense to be given a chance at this point. So, I'm going to swap a GBA BC for a SNES BC. This is probably a bad idea, and my other final result probably is maybe more likely. But this one just feels better to me, and I can't explain why. And by doing this, we're actually opening up one final slot for a Super Circuit track. And in my opinion, the selection can only be one remaining thing, which would be GBA Rainbow Road. It's next up in line, and would give us four Rainbow Roads, which feels more right than three in this game. And my only problem with this situation is that Riverside Park is now not the only returning new GBA track. Maybe in the end, you know, having both a SNES and GBA BC would be okay. But regardless, I think I'm kind of tired of the process now, so here are a few final results I could see. Give me your predictions if you want to. It's always appreciated. We can talk about it in the comments. And with that, this video is a wrap, and we will see you in the next one. I'm probably going to do a follow-up after Wave 2 is revealed, see what we got right and wrong, and hey, maybe we'll update then. But until now, see ya until next time.